If somebody told you that you can change the world, would you believe it? This was a sentence that was told to me by ambassadors and experts who worked in the field of social change for many, many years at the United Nations. For me, it was comforting to know that the previous generation have so much confidence that us, the millennials, are the ones who can bring about change that have never been seen before. But then it dawned on me. It is true that we are more than ever involved in conversations, both online and offline, about all the problems in the world. We are taught to be passionate and responsible and to think about the society before ourselves, and that is embedded in our education and in the people around us. And it is true. There have been many studies and researches made on how millennials think today. A study made by Deloitte and many other leading firms show that six out of 10 of the new generations say that they want to work for a company that has a purpose. And not just any purpose, but the purpose of creating positive impact. One fourth of consumers are demanding products that are ethical and sustainable. And 80% of all millennials say that it is our responsibility to work towards a better world. And that is regardless of whether you're a government or a company or an individual. So with all these powers that we have, with technology, with the conversations we have, then when I look back at the people I know at home, at my university and my friends, I realize that we don't do much. Although a lot of people say that they want change and they wish to see a better world, a very small proportion of those people go out and try to change things for themselves. And so came the question of why. Why is it so difficult for us to make changes to the world? There are many reasons to this. One, it could be fear, the fear of uncertainty. It could be the lack of reason, not knowing why we should do it. Or it could just be about the comfort zone. Maybe it's better if we just stay where we are, because we don't really know if where we want to be is really better. From my experience, I've come down to one ultimate conclusion, which is that it is because of one word. Comprehension. It is almost impossible for us to imagine how we as a single individual can change the entire planet. I mean, talk about things, simple things, like New Year resolution. How many people here have kept their promise to their New Year resolution this year? Very few, congratulations. I don't have a lot of success stories to tell you about my New Year resolutions. But what I do have for you today are stories of individuals who have inspired me with life lessons that I've kept to this very day. Three individuals who live in very extreme circumstances and different social statuses, but were able to teach me values that are so much bigger than themselves. And they made me believe that the answer to the question that if and can one person change the world, the answer is yes. So my journey taught me that there are three key components into creating a world of change. And that is one, understand, two, do, and three, believe. The components are interconnected, and without even a single one of them, it is impossible for us to change the world. So looking at the very first step, or rather the very first component, because it's more of a flow rather than steps, in order to solve any problem, you have to understand it. So there are two main ways to understand a problem. One is through the eyes of others, and the other is through our own. Having grown up in a family that was in the middle class, I was given a lot of privileges in my life. 
I heard a lot about poor people, about people who don't have a lot of opportunity, a lot of people around the world who need help. But no matter how much I try, it is impossible for me to understand truly what it's like to be like that because I'm not raised and I'm not in that kind of environment. So four years ago, I decided that this needed to change, that I needed to go and understand things for myself. So what did I see? I saw the things that people talk about, the lack of opportunity. But it's even more than that. I felt for the first time in my life what it meant to live without electricity, without access to clean water, without rooms that have a roof on it, and see children walk to school without any shoes. For the first time, I felt the desperation and the lack of opportunity that these people felt. But my biggest understanding wasn't about their living condition, but rather it was a realization that was given to me by this one little girl in the picture. One morning when I woke up and I walked out of my room, this little girl was standing there with her hands folded by her back, and she was smiling cheerfully, playfully. As I walked up to her, she ran towards me, stretched out her hands, and opened her tiny little palm, and inside were two pieces of candy. I said, oh, who is this for? She said, for you. And I asked, why? And she said something that touched me really deeply. She said, because it makes me happy. A little girl who's barely 10 years old that lives in a condition where she can barely afford food for lunch or school tuition or even books to go to school wanted to give me something that she often doesn't get. And that's when I realized the power of human connection. I understood my role as a person in that setting. I was there to give hope, to give them the opportunity to become someone so much better than what they are and not let their circumstances define them. And I realized the true value of human connection and that our ultimate responsibility is to help and to take care of one another as human beings. Without going to see things for myself, I could not have had this understanding. The next component is to do. Why do we have to do things? Well, first of all, the obvious reason is if you don't do anything, nothing can change. But the second reason is because life is a learning process that never ends. No matter how old you are, you're always going to learn from the mistakes that you make. And if you want to make the world a better place, then you have to know how to do it. And I learned this through various situations as I started to do things along the way. And what did I do? Well, since I've joined university, I've taken part in my faculty's rural project where we go and build rooms in school and also teach English and give donations. I took that very quickly to the next level and took it to international stages. I joined the largest student organization in the world that sends volunteers abroad to do community service. And I facilitated that experience with a team of leaders, young leaders, and changed many people's lives that way. But all of this began four years ago when I took seven high school students from Finland with me to Thailand to do community service for two weeks. This is a picture of us when we were doing community service at Father Ray Foundation, and this is where we were teaching the disabled people English. One morning when I walked down, I saw a man who was sitting in a wheelchair. 
being the good volunteer and the good teenager that I was, I walked up to him and I said, hey, sir, where would you like to go? He turned and he said, I'm fine, thank you. And in Thailand, we're taught of this very special word that can't really be translated to English, which is kring jai. And that's what I felt, I thought that he was feeling. He didn't want to put the burden on me to have to take him somewhere. So I walked up to him and I grabbed his wheelchair by the arms and I said, where do you want to go? Let me take you. The next three minutes were in complete silence. We didn't exchange a single word. When we arrived at the destination, he started wheeling his chair, turned back halfway, gave a faint smile, and wheeled away. As a teenager, I didn't really quite understand what happened. Did I do something wrong? Why did he look so sad? And now that I've had the chance to reflect on it, I realized that in that three minutes, I did something really important. I took away his independence. I took away his capabilities. And it wasn't his disability that disabled him, but it was I who disabled him. And that moment I realized that there is a certain way that we have to help people. We can't just go around and help people by giving them what they need, but we have to make sure that when we leave that place, they will be able to stand on their own feet and be able to make dreams for themselves. We must make them feel that they are capable of being just as equal as everyone else. And they are, and they deserve to be. And so as you can see, by doing, I gained a new understanding. So there really isn't a way for you to understand without doing, because if you really understand things and don't do anything, there can be no change. And if you do things without understanding, you could be doing things wrong. And so finally comes the last component, which for me is the most crucial one. Believe. After doing community service for about three years, I had the chance to sit down and ask myself, is what I'm doing really matter? Am I really changing anybody's life? Am I really doing anything meaningful at all? And then I started to doubt. I started to wonder if I can really change the world. And then came a professor who gave a thank you speech at the end of a camp. For the first time in my life, I saw a 40-year-old man walk up on stage grabbed the microphone in front of his face and cried. He spoke one sentence and one sentence only. Thank you for seeing us. He could have thanked us for the room that we built, for the English that we taught, for the donations that we gave, but he chose to thank us simply for seeing their community. I was so struck. How can somebody feel so little and neglected in this world to the point where they feel like they're not even seen? And then I realized that sometimes in life, something that we do that is so little can mean so much to an individual and it can inspire them to do things and become so much more than we were. So I started to believe that yes, we can make a difference. And so going back to my very first question, can one person really change the world? I have a confession. I haven't, not yet. But I think you guys know the answer to the question. Because you can name individuals who you say 
have made changes to the world. Mahatma Gandhi, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. The list goes on and on. And you can tell me this list for the entire night. But most of these people were not alone. They were leaders of thought, of action, and they had people who believed in the change they were trying to create. That's how they were able to create changes in the world. And so for me, it is time that we stop complaining about things. It is time that we take things into our own hands. With this power of technology and everything that we have right now, it is possible for us as individuals to change the world. Mahatma Gandhi once said that be the wish you change to see in this world. I think that we must be the change that we wish to see in this world because we cannot sit around and expect that one day somebody will show up and make them happen for us. Imagine a world where everyone is afraid that things will stay the same more than they're afraid of change. And that everyone gets up together and say, we have to make these changes happen. That I can be Steve Jobs, I can be Mahatma Gandhi, I can be people who make an impact to this world. Wouldn't that be a world that you want to live in? For me, once that happens, and we add all the little beliefs that we have that we can change the world together, we can begin to see small changes in our community, positive changes. And once that happens, and add all the communities together, we can see a change in our country. And finally, we can really see a profound change in our world. It is up to us, it is our choice, if we want to believe that we can or not. And so, I would like to finally leave you with a quote that I hope that you can all say to yourselves when you leave this room. And also tell others that they too should be saying this. And that quote is that, I am the change we all wish to see in the world. Thank you.